to the social sciences. And in this lesson, we are going to give it two of us. My name is Nadia Berlin, and I have teacher here from the Edenda Sanyam Interpreter. And this lesson is picked from the social studies curriculum in Uganda Primary Six. And we are talking about the sources of human history. Before I start this lesson, let's remind ourselves about this deadly disease called COVID-19. This disease is already us here in the country. So what we have to do is to take care, to be very careful. Please wash your hands, wash your hands and wash your hands. And if you have flu, please use handkerchief, sneezing and coughing. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the sources of human history. We are talking about three sources. And in each one of the sources, we are going to see the advantages and disadvantages. But before we start, I request you to get a pen, a book, and a pencil if you don't need it, and get somewhere to start to sit. Let me wait for you as you get ready. All right, I think all the are now ready. The first source of history we are going to talk about is the linguistic source. In this source, we study human languages and we think of the way these people move, for example, where, where was their origin? Where did they come from? How did they move and where they settled? So, when we are talking about linguistic source of history, we study the similarities in the different languages. For example, if you look at the Bantu languages, you can find out that there are similarities in languages in Uganda, for example, in Kenya and in Tanzania. You find similar words. Even when you go outside East Africa, for example, if you go South Africa, you hear people talking somewhat similar languages to what you hear in Uganda. So when we study the languages of the people, we can know their origin. The course of migration, how did they move and where they settled? So, in studying languages, we can know very many things about and think of them, about a tribe, about a community, anything like community. So, the linguistic source is very useful to us. Please don't forget. Another source of history is the written records. Any social scientist will study what is written. For example, I may write about my family, I write about my tribe, I can write about my affinity group in a book. So I write what is happening to me. People of Yungiko were writing, and some of the writings I came with them. For example, if you look here, you can see the the Egyptians. They were writing. their community, their customs, what they eat, what they don't eat, what 
actually like an organization. So this is the kind of organization. We have another secret here, which is the Greeks. The Greeks were also writing. They wrote things down. They wrote things down. And when they write, they can communicate. So if they go beyond, they go beyond writing. And with that, the various forms of writing can see here. When we study them, we know the history culture, norms, values, so when we read, we can learn more about a given society. Now, is writing or are written records good? What are the advantages of having written records? Can you think about the advantages of Keeping things in writing, how good is that practice? Hmm? One, yes, we are saying that if I write my ideas from my brain and I write them down, book, that information will make a change. Can make this a change. So it is very good for us to write what is happening. So that even my great great grandchildren can read about what is happening to me. So, writing information is very good. And another advantage is that written information lasts for a long period of time. You can keep it forever. For example, the writing that I showed you here, those writing from the Egyptians were several thousand years ago, and we still read about what was happening in these languages. These people were writing. So, when we write our ideas every day, every week, every lesson, in other words, we are keeping history. So, one source of history is having written. As we are going to see another source, perhaps we can think about the challenges of having written records. We face any challenges. How bad or how unreliable are the written records? First and foremost, we can think that they are expensive. We need money to buy books, to buy answers. No books to buy newspapers so that we get the information. And you may find that if I don't have money, I will buy, and therefore I will access that information. And another disadvantage, perhaps, is that some people cannot interpret what is written, they may not be able to read. So that way, they cannot access that information in the books. So, we are saying that even though they are expensive, and we can only read the history of nature, right? So my dear learners, let's rest. And when we come back, we'll talk about the third uh, source of human history. Thank you. Welcome back from the break, my dear learners. And we are still continuing with the sources of human history. Remember, in our first part, we talked about the human record or written records as a source of history, and we talked about linguistic as a source of history. So we say that in the linguistic source, we study the languages of the people and we compare and see where they came from how they moved and where they settled. So we see the origin, the course of migration and settlement. Then we talked about the written records and we saw that yeah, it's very good for us to write something down. Now, my 
dear learners, we are continuing the third and the last part of source of history, and this is archaeology. Can we say archaeology? Archaeology. So archaeology is a long word, but we can spell it together. It is a r c h a e o l g y archaeology. So what is archaeology? Archaeology is a scientific study of the remains and the tools of long ago. So when we study the remains, we study the bones of the people who died. We study the skull, study the other bones, and they tell us about the people and their way of life. So archaeology is a scientific study of the remains and the tools. And the tools, what are we talking about? For example, the hand axe, the borax, these things tell us what economic activities these people did and they help us to know more about the society. Now, a person who studies archaeology is called an archaeologist. There are many archaeologists here. But one of the most famous ones we must remember in this lesson is called Dr. L. S. B. Leake. And that scientist discovered the oldest skull known to man today. It dates 1.8 million years ago. So it's a very important study. You study the tools, the remains, the bones, the skulls of the people, and you know more about the community. And when we have a place of interest where we find many things of long ago, then we can say this is an archaeological site. So an archaeological site is a place where we can find the remains and the tools of people of long ago and perhaps the materials they use, and it helps us to know. I have some of them with me. I have what we call Nero rock paintings. These paintings are in Eastern Uganda. So these paintings, when you study them, you know the type of life these people lived, what they liked and what they didn't like. So a Nero rock painting is one archaeological site in Uganda. We have another one. I can show you. That is the Nakaima tree. That tree is in Mubende. And it tells us what the people who lived during that time liked or uh, their work or how they worshipped. So, Nakaima tree is an, an archaeological site and it is here in Uganda. We have the famous Bigobia Mubende. It's here. See, it can tell us what those people lived in and how they worshipped their gods. So, Goyangun is another archaeological site. There is another one called Tanda Pits. These pits are somewhere near Tiana. So, when you go there, you study the people of that time, how they believe. And if you have ever heard of the story of Chintu and Nambi, that is the place where Mamunde hid in those caves. So the Baganda believe that those caves down there, those pits down there, is where Mamunde went. Uh -huh. So they help us to learn how those, the people of Long Ago worshipped and how they uh, live their lives. Another archaeological site we have, the famous one, 
Uh, it is in Tanzania. It's called the Old by Gorge. It's what you can see in this picture. The Old by Gorge is this, uh, a stone age site. Actually, this is a stone age site. And it's where we find the oldest skull known today. It is there. And people go there to look at how the early man looked like. So, there are very, very many archaeological stations or sites in East Africa and they are all useful because we go there to study how those ancient communities lived. So the question is, do we need the archaeological sites? Yes, we do. We do need them. First and foremost, as I said, these sites are for study. We go there to learn how the people live their lives in Mondego. What did they eat? What was their work? Were they cattle keepers? Were they farmers? Were they how how did they live their lives? So we go and look at their tools and look at their now. Uh, writings and we learn about those societies. So archaeology is another part. So we study. One use is for study. Secondly, it's a tourist attraction. Many people come from wherever the world to come and look at how the people of East Africa lived. So an archaeological uh, site is useful to us today it attracts tourists. When tourists come, they bring for an exchange and get some money out of that. So that is archaeology as a source of human history. So far, so good. We have seen three. I said one is the linguistic source, two, we have the written records. And three, we have discussed archaeology. There are other sources which we can't talk about today, but that is basically what we have studied today. All right, now we are going to do an exercise. And this exercise, I'm going to read the questions and we're going to write the answers. Oh. Think about the answer. So if you have a pen, get it, and a book, and when I read, you write. Then we shall check ourselves. I'm reading. Question one. Name any three sources of history. Name any three sources of history. That's one. Question two. Why is keeping records important? Why is keeping records important? Question three. What is archaeology? What is archaeology? Question four. Of what importance? is the linguistic source to historians. Of what importance is the linguistic source to historians? And the last question. Suggest one reason why Nero rock paintings should be preserved. Suggest one reason 
why narrow rock paintings should be preserved. So those are our five questions. We're going to see the answers to those questions. We're going to do one by one. Question one said, name three sources of history. So what are the three sources of history talked about? Can we remind ourselves? In this lesson we have seen one, we have the linguistic source. Two, we have written records. And three, we have archaeology. So those are the three. If you have got them, give yourself a good, a big tick. Question two says, why is keeping records important? Why is keeping records important? There are many answers, but today we say that it helps us uh, to know the things that happened long ago and says it helps us to, uh, to write what has happened to us. And of course, it is not easily changed. And number three said, what is archaeology? Archaeology is the scientific study of remains and tools of long ago. The scientific study of remains and tools of long ago. Number four. Of what importance is the linguistic source to historians? So we say that uh, the linguistic source will help us to know the origin of a community, the cause of migration, and the settlement of the community. So those are the important. So you could give one. The last question says that suggests one reason why narrow rock paintings should be preserved. You could give many reasons, but one of them could be that it is a tourist attraction. Nero rock painting is a tourist attraction. And two, we say that it is used for study. So those are our questions. Now, my dear learners, uh, I thank you very much for being attentive and spending some time to share a few ideas about uh, our social studies lesson. And uh, in this lesson, remember, we have discussed three sources of history. We have said, discussed the linguistic source, we have discussed the written records, and we have discussed archaeology. Our next lesson, we shall see something else. But as for now, I encourage you, please stay at home. Do not move. COVID is here. Please allow yourself to rest and learn from home. Otherwise, if you move out of the home, you can get this bad disease. I thank you very much for being attentive. And please remember to wash your hands all the time and stay safe. God bless you.